Good evening and good afternoon, folks. Thank you so much for joining us today. We still have some folks trickling in, but that's okay. We will welcome them as they come in um, to the meeting. And um, today is a really exciting day uh, for not just the team at Funding You at the Dream.US, but social finance and everyone that has been working really hard to get us off the ground. And today we're gonna have the great opportunity to hear from Ryan who is going to walk us through the application process. And if you have any questions, just hold um, your questions or you can put them in the chat. Um, and uh, this one is a little bit different than the other meetings that we've done because this one is webinar style. So you can actually take yourself on mute and um, speak directly to us um, if you wanna do that. If not, you can always put your questions on the chat but we're gonna go slowly through the application process. Um, we're gonna go section by section and we're gonna have here the team or the team at Funding You and Social Finance is here to answer any of your questions. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Ryan for him to start us off and go through the application. Okay, uh, everybody, my name is uh, Brian Bradburn. I'm the uh, senior developer here at uh, Funding You. I'll be your tour guide and I'll do my best not to uh, put all of you to sleep. Um, so uh, what, uh, what will happen uh, functionally is uh, in the near future, you will get an email and there will be a link uh, in that email. Uh, and uh, it will be a custom uh, link just for you and it will log uh, you into our, our website. Uh, and once you're logged in, uh, you will be uh, presented uh, with this first page uh, right here. Uh, so we just have a little bit of information, uh, Dreamers Graduate Loan Program, um, as well as our first checkbox, uh, where uh, we're asking you to just kind of read through this, uh, make sure uh, everything is A-OK -okay, um, uh, before you proceed. So um, are you a scholarship recipient of the Dream USA? Are you at least 18 years of age, um, a DACA recipient, TPS beneficiary, or uh, have an employment authorization document? Um, uh, uh, you must be accepted into an eligible uh, graduate program, uh, eligible degree and school. Uh, as well as uh, some of the uh, legalese from uh, the lawyers, uh, enjoy that. Uh, but if everything uh, looks good, uh, please uh, uh, select the uh, checkbox and uh, we will get started. Put on your seatbelts or don't, if you wanna live on the edge. All right, uh, so the first page here, um, uh, we're just gonna get uh, some uh, basic information uh, from you, first name, uh, last name, uh, mobile phone number. Uh, what you'll notice down here is we have pre-populated uh, your school uh, and graduate program. If for some reason uh, that has changed or it is incorrect, uh, please feel free to uh, hit clear uh, and you can search for your school or graduate program. Um, this is a filtered list. So for some reason, um, uh, your selection is not available uh, in here. Um, we are going to ask that uh, you reach out to us. Uh, so you'll notice at the bottom of, of each page, uh, we have a Raul down here. He is a real, uh, person, uh, but uh, he will be your, your maitre d', uh, so he's going to make sure that uh, you get taken care of. Um, uh, so uh, with, uh, with the school issue, graduate uh, program issue, uh, please contact us so we can research and figure out uh, why it wasn't in the list. Um, but if you have any other questions throughout uh, the application process or uh, through the disbursement process or, or wherever you are, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at any time. Uh, so I will go ahead and uh, fill this out, uh, first name, last name. I will put in a fake phone number. I don't think anybody's calling me anyway, but, and uh, let's see, we have a, a school here, University, Arizona State University, Cochise. Uh, so if everything looks good, uh, we will go ahead and hit the next button. All right, so this brings us to what we call our academic progress page. Uh, so the first question, I mean, one of the bigger questions is um, what, what is your loan need uh, going to be uh, from us? Uh, so this is where you would put your uh, loan amount. So um, I'm just gonna pre-fill in some uh, data as we go here. Um, oh. So I'm gonna put in uh, 10,000 uh, to start. Uh, we will ask what the uh, school year start date is. I'm gonna put uh, September 1st. Uh, the next two questions, uh, uh, it's around uh, the program length and how much you have completed. Um, so is this a you know, two year, three year, et cetera, program? I'll put, this is a three year program, um, as well as how much of the program you have already completed. 
Uh, so just uh, please pay attention to that. Um, so um, in my situation, I'm gonna say that I've completed two years. I have one year left uh, in my program. Uh, we'll then ask for what is your expected graduation date? Um, so I will put, uh, since I have one year left, uh, May of 2022. Uh, and then we have two additional questions. One is uh, what is your enrollment status? Full-time, part-time, either one is fine. Uh, will have no, uh, no effect. Um, as well as uh, uh, if you're able to let us know what your tuition uh, type is it is it in state uh, is it uh, out of state okay and with all of that selected and uh, filled out we will uh, go ahead and hop on to our next page uh, which is our financial plan page um, uh, so I just want to clarify on this page um, what we are doing here is just trying to understand your financial situation while you're in school. Um, if you're unable to answer these questions or you don't know, uh, that is perfectly fine. Uh, it will in no way affect uh, your ability uh, to get a loan. And just to reiterate, it's just to help us understand uh, the financial situation while you're in school. Um, so the first question uh, that we're asking is, will you be working or earning income during school? Uh, if yes, how much per month? Um, so you can just put in an amount. Uh, if no, or you don't know, please like no, that's fine. Uh, will your parents or relatives be giving you uh, an allowance? Uh, yes, how much per month? Uh, yes or no, uh, if you don't know um, or nothing, that's fine, please put no. Um, and uh, do you have existing savings to uh, cover uh, this school year? Uh, if yes, how much for the school year? If no, or you don't know, please like no. Uh, and then the final question um, is, uh, what was your annual income before uh, you started your graduate program, before you enrolled uh, in grad school? And we understand some people rolling directly from an undergrad program to a grad program. So if you put zero, perfectly fine, will not affect your ability to get a loan. Uh, so I'm just going to put in a value of um, 20000 And with all of that information in, uh, we're able to uh, hit the next button and continue on. Okay, so this will bring us to our next step, which is our uh, credit check. Uh, and so just to clarify, this is uh, what's called a soft uh, credit check. It will have no impact on your uh, credit score. Uh, so we just need a few pieces of information in order to uh, initiate this uh, process. The first one is, what was your last uh, permanent address? Uh, so I'm gonna put in our uh, office address. You know where to send the, the fan mail. Uh, so we'll verify that. It'll give us a verified address. Um, and uh, then the additional pieces of information uh, we'll have our uh, date of birth. And I will put uh, January 1st, uh, 2000, complete lie. Uh, and uh, a fake, uh, well, you should put in a real social security number. I'm going to put in a fake one, but uh, uh, please don't do what I do. Uh, you won't get very far. So let's see here. Okay. Uh, and so after you have supplied that uh, information, we have uh, two questions here. Uh, the first one is, do you consent uh, to us sending you text messages? And uh, so we just know that sometimes it's a little bit easier to stay up to date on the status of your loan and what, what is going on via text message. So we uh, try to make this an option for communication. Yes or no, either option is fine. Uh, I love getting text messages, so I'll say yes. Uh, and then the next question is, um, uh, do, uh, uh, you know, do you agree to allow us to uh, run the credit check? So please make sure you read uh, through all that, but this is just giving us the, um, the authorization uh, to proceed uh, with this next step. So I will say yes, and we'll just reiterate, uh, this is what we call a soft credit check and we'll it will not have a, uh, an effect on your credit score. Uh, so with all of that information in, uh, we will hit uh, check eligibility. Uh, this will take a few seconds to run uh, while it pulls uh, that information and assuming uh, everything is A-OK, -okay, uh, this will allow us to uh, take a look at some of the uh, repayment options of your loan. And OK, all right, so here we go, you're pre-approved. Um, so uh, we, we have two uh, options uh, for repayment. Uh, the first one is um, a, a, a full deferral while you are in school. So you would pay uh, nothing per month for the entirety of your graduate program. Uh, the other option is a monthly payment of $25 while you are in school. Uh, 
Um, so uh, just please note that as you toggle between these options, the uh, loan details below will change. Um, so we welcome you and encourage you to make sure that you scroll down to take a look at um, what, what the uh, effect is of those different options on your repayment plan um, so that you make sure that uh, you're making the best decision uh, for your financial situation. So please know that is down there. Um, I will scroll back up. Uh, for me, uh, I will uh, select a monthly uh, payment of a, a full deferral payment, uh, and you will be able to uh, go on to the next step. Um, so uh, this next page, this is the, uh, I call this the bureaucracy page. Um, so we, we uh, have to pass over some information to the uh, Department of Education, as well as to your school. So this gives us that information so that we're able to fill out those forms. Uh, the first one is the school year start date, which you have already supplied. Uh, the next one is your school year end date. Uh, so we will just say uh, 5, 15, 2022. 20, and uh, let's see, we have our cost of attendance. Uh, so what you'll notice is we have these two fields, cost of attendance and estimated financial aid, uh, which is a calculation which gives us our financial needs. So for example, if I say my cost of attendance is 25,000, I expect to have you know, about $5,000 in financial aid. Uh, that gives me uh, a financial need of $20,000. Uh, we know that uh, these numbers aren't gonna be exact, uh, but you know, best guesstimates uh, will we'll help us just uh, fill out that paperwork uh, on your behalf. Uh, so once we have that information uh, on hand, please uh, select next. And I promise we're, we're almost there, almost there. Uh, so the, uh, the uh, final stage of the application is where we um, are gonna upload our documents uh, and actually apply. Uh, so we have four um, required uh, categories of documents. Um, those are gonna be your uh, uh, offer of acceptance letter, tuition bill, financial aid award letter, uh, and employment authorization document. Um, and so if you are on your phone, uh, you'll be able to upload you know, uh, photos from your phone or files from your phone, um, or you know, even uh, take a screenshot uh, if needed. Um, if you're on your computer, uh, you're obviously able just to just select uh, choose files here. Uh, just please know you can upload as many documents or pages uh, as needed. Uh, you're not restricted uh, to, to just one. So I'm just gonna select one, that's all I have, uh, but uh, please feel free to uh, supply as many uh, as needed. Um, so these, these categories are required. So you'll notice that as we start to upload these documents, it turns um, blue. Uh, and so you will not be able to actually uh, submit your application until uh, that, that uh, these categories are uh, completed. Okay, and then we have an additional category of documents that is not required, and that's going to be a driver's license or state ID. Uh, we understand that uh, some some of you may not have that available, um, so uh, uh, we will be able to verify that by other means later in the application process. But if you do have uh, that, please go ahead and uh, 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 upload it. Uh, it'll help just things go faster down the line, excuse me. Uh, but if you don't, don't hesitate, uh, it's not gonna prevent you from going. Uh, so for just this example, we'll pretend that I, I don't have it um, and we will be able to uh, continue along with our process. We have a little bit of legalese here. Please make sure you read through everything and are comfortable. Uh, and assuming everything uh, is in order, um, you are able to uh, agree and apply. And that's it. You have done your part, congratulations. Uh, so now the ball gets put into our court. Uh, and so just kind of the process at this point um, is we will uh, verify the application, eligibility, the, the documents that were uploaded, make sure it's legible, et cetera. Um, and you should expect to hear from us within two days of, of submitting, or two business days, excuse me, of the submitting your application. Um, so it'll either be, hey, everything's good to go, um, or um, we may need uh, additional information. Uh, if everything is good to go, we will uh, schedule a loan advisor call. So uh, that'll allow us uh, and you to review the terms of your loan, make sure uh, everything uh, meets expectations. Uh, and assuming everything is good to go there, uh, you'll be able to review, sign your loan documents. Um, at that point, we'll reach out to your school on your behalf to verify and certify your need. 
And uh, as soon as we hear back from the school, we will uh, send you a final disclosure and uh, schedule schedule disbursements. And that is that's kind of the form. Uh, not not much to it. Um, hopefully, uh, didn't go too fast or put anybody to sleep. But I will uh, I will turn the floor uh, back over over to you guys. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ryan. And we have been getting lots of questions while you were showing the presentation. And I think it would be great if we start um, at the top of the, the list of the questions that we were being asked. And for the sake of everyone and the recording, I'm going to be asking some of the questions, even though um, we have had our team at Funding You um, answering some of those already. So um, one of the questions that we got was from Jose and he wanted to know for the loan amount, is that for the total amount needed or the amount for each year? And Brandon um, uh, from Funding You said, it is the amount for each year that you need um, the loan for. Ingrid asked, what if the amount is different for each year? Can we enter how much we need for each school year? And Brandon um, answered, hi, Ingrid, that is correct. You will fill out an application each year for whatever you need for that upcoming ac academic year. So this application, even though let's say you are in a program that is two years, you will not be asking the funds for the full two years, rather what you're gonna be needing in the immediate one first year that your first academic year. Um, Homero asked, will, will you be pre-approved on the same day? And um, Raul, part of the Funding You team, um, replied, you would receive a pre-approval the same day if pre-approved. And once your documents are submitted, a full review would be completed and you would be notified. So that's great to know. Um, Cynthia asked, if I have savings and can cover my first year but need the loan for the second year, how do I make that known? So Cynthia, that's so great that you have savings and that you can cover your first year. That means that you're gonna have to, um, you're gonna be lending a lot less money, which is good for you in the long run. Um, so what it's gonna happen is that you will be applying for the loan, not this year, but next year when you need those funds. So Flora asked, if there's a bankruptcy, will we be eligible for the loan? And um, Raul had replied, we recommend that you apply via the application process to check eligibility so that we can review your application. So go ahead, if, even if you have some questions, um, submit an application so that the team at Funding You can take a look at it and make sure that you're eligible or not. And I love this question from Luis um, that says, can we make payments higher than the minimum? So in the application, it was shown that there was the option of no minimum payment or a minimum payment of $25. Um, actually, you can make a higher minimum payment and it's actually advisable that you make a higher minimum payment if um, you have the ability to do so because in the end, you're gonna be paying a lot less in the interest um, for your loan um, uh, if you do that. So um, Lily Beth asked a question and said, will the school keep the amount for both semesters for the full academic year? And I'm gonna ask Raul um, to help us answer that question. I'm not sure if Raul is able to speak right now. He's uh, he uh, has been sick the last few days and barely had a voice earlier today. So I'll cover for him. Uh, Raul, uh, speak up if if I'm wrong there. Uh, but the way that it works is you'll get approved uh, for the entire academic year, and the school will actually get two disbursements. So they'll we will send them your first first semester's money. Uh, for the fall, and then uh, in the spring and January timeframe, we'll send the other half. Yeah, and, and if you're on quarters, uh, the school will schedule those disbursements. So the, the school kind of uh, dictates uh, when uh, those disbursements and how much per disbursement will be made. Um, but it would be up to that full uh, uh, full school year amount. Wonderful, thank you so much, Ryan and Brandon. 
So there's another question by Ingrid on the cost of attendance and um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask any question that um, you may have. Um, but Ingrid, I'm gonna read your question now. And her question says, do we enter with the school list or can we enter a different estimated cost of attendance? For example, the school lists a certain number for housing, but I already have housing and it's much less than the estimated price on the school's website. Uh, I can answer that, Brandon, or do you want to? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. The, the, the estimated amount uh, that, that you have is perfectly uh, fine and, and advisable. We, we're, we're trying to get a good idea of what your actual need is. So if you already have um, uh, your housing uh, taken care of, um, uh, uh, you can uh, exclude that. Or if, if it's not uh, taken care of, you can, you can include that. So it's, it's um, uh, uh, yes you'll be able to make that adjustment as needed. And that's okay. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, hello, I have a very specific question. Can I ask? Sure, tell us your name. Luis. Hi, Luis. Go hello. Ahead. Um, so I get charged at an out-of-state tuition rate of 45 grand, but I applied for a residence, residency change and it would go down to 25 grand. Um, should I leave it as 45 or change it to 25? because I haven't received an answer yet from the financial aid office. And um, if I leave it at 45 and it changes to 25, I don't want, I'll end up receiving the 45 for the semester, but th does that make sense what I'm asking? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, if, if for some reason uh, your need actually did change uh, after you were approved for a loan and we had dispersed, uh, dispersed funds, the school would, um, would refund uh, that okay. difference. Okay. Uh, so if, if that did, uh, if your tuition amount did change and, and we know that that, that potentially uh, will occur. All right, then perfect, thank you. Okay, thank you, Luis. Um, Pam asks, we need to have, do we need to have the financial aid letter? Does this mean if we have any scholarships at this moment, what if we don't have any of that right now? So, I mean, basically the application will be live just because we launch. You, you may not have all your documents yet. We know that um, it might still be a little bit early in the process for some schools out there in terms of providing all that documentation. So you can apply, uh, get to the point that Ryan walked through where you find out you know, if you're pre-approved um, and get all the way basically to that uh, page where you upload your documents and um, you know, basically wait until your school provides you with the necessary information. And if you wanna reach out and tell us that, that that's great, but you know, we know that, that people will get hung up there and uh, you know, it'll be out there for a while. So don't feel like if you don't have it now, you, know, you lose your chance or anything. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Diana asked, would having no credit hurt our application? No, uh, it's, uh, it's, you don't have to have a credit history or a, or a FICO score. That's, that's not what we're looking for in the credit report. Okay, here's a question on the application. For the financial aid questions towards the end, does this include our savings, scholarship, et cetera, or is this just a financial aid we will be getting from the school and or the loan? Sorry, my dog was barking a little bit uh, and I, I didn't hear that entire thing. Um, okay, sorry, yeah, we could, or Brian, do you know the answer? Uh, yeah, I, the, the, the question was, um, uh, on, there's a financial aid question. So, you know, how much is the cost of attendance and then how much is your financial aid? Uh, should they include uh, savings or allowance in that financial aid uh, amount? Uh, my understanding is that they would not. I'll, I'll, defer that to you also no I, you wouldn't put that there i think if you plan to use that then you would just take that out of you know you kind of start with your cost of attendance and then you know, if you have scholarships or whatever that would be maybe on your financial aid statement <clears throat> but and then there's what you're responsible for 
if you have savings, that's great. Like Gabby said, that's that's a good situation. Um, and so you would just net that out of what you're asking for when you put your uh, loan amount in. Ryan, you, you look like I, I'm answering the yeah. wrong question. No, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 uh, right, right. So as far as the loan amount requested, uh, they would want to make sure they deduct any savings that they expect to put towards it. Uh, but on that certification page, uh, where we ask for uh, cost of attendance and financial aid in that financial aid box, uh, they would not include um, uh, uh, savings right. or anything in that. Yeah, sorry. Just yeah. clarify. Right. Thank you. What is one total? So, what if it's one total amount for an 18 month program? Would I put the total or just for the 12 month year? That's So for the 12 months or the 18 month program, the totality? If it's an 18 month program, you would put what you need for the 12 months for the fall and the spring semester. And then basically it would come back next year for the, for the next six months. Wonderful, thank you. So uh, America asks, hello, is the interest rate fixed? Also, does it start while we're in school or after? So the interest rate is fixed. Um, it will always be the same uh, the, the, for the loan that you take out this year. Uh, does it start while we're in? So interest starts accruing while you are in school. Uh, but like we said before, you, you don't have to make that payment. The options for payment are either pay nothing or make a $25 flat pay. And, and like we talked about earlier, you can always pay more than that. Um, so if you if you plan to make, it, it doesn't really matter. But if you probably if you're planning to make more than the twenty five, it would select the twenty five. Uh, but the interest does start accruing while you're in school, but you don't have to pay it while you're in school. Okay, perfect. So um, Romero is asking a question around the application process. And he asked, if my class has already started, could I possibly have my application be processed faster? So I know that um, at the end, we're gonna have um, Danielle talk about um, when the application is gonna go live and heads up on data collection for us. So just hold on tight because we're gonna give that information towards the end of the presentation. So, um, there's a question around asking for more, a little bit more. So can you borrow a little bit more for extra expenses, books, et cetera? And will the school reimburse after taking the tuition amount? So the answer there is that you can ask for the total cost of the cost of attendance, which includes books, transportation, housing, et cetera. So that is the, the amount up to where you will be able to um, take out the loan and you have to look at whatever your institution has as a cost of attendance in order for you to know how much is that. So we have some questions around um, credit bureau and specific, some specifics there. And I think instead of going and answering those specifics, what we wanna let people know is that um, you should apply and let the funding you team um, really look into your um, application to see if you're eligible or not. Because right now they won't be able to tell you um, specifically if you be able if you will be eligible or not, depending on um, that your question. So I, um, I'm sorry. I had a question regarding the cost of attendance that you just spoke about. Can I ask? Um, so in uh, that section, I guess it was asked if you could borrow extra and then you mentioned that you could borrow up to your cost of attendance um, and then the disbursements would follow by the university. So like in my, in my particular program, um, it's a medical program, you're not allowed to work. So you basically all of your expenses are coming off of that cost of attendance. Um, so if you end up putting a, 
up to the cost of attendance, right? Because I, I, in reality, I don't know how much I'm going to spend. Um, living expenses can be lower or higher depending on what you select. If let's say I end up using less than the cost of attendance that first year and I get a better idea of what I can spend, can I return that money at the end of the, like as a payment or would it matter? Like uh, in regards to the loan, I suppose. Yeah, so I, I think um, if I understand it right, you probably wouldn't know if that is the right amount until the end, right? Or kind of later on once you kind of have a better understanding of your expenses. And I, I think the best thing to do in that situation is, you know, err on the side of, you know, making sure you have what you need. Uh, and then you could choose you know, if you have money left over and and you're in a position to kind of prepay that amount there's like we said before there's that's a there's nothing wrong with that there are no penalties for that and it actually means that you're going to pay less so overall in the long run and then because this is year by year you know next year you'd probably uh you know have a better understanding of what your total cost would be and and you know maybe adjust the amount that you're asking for downward. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. Great. Wonderful. Thank you so much for asking that question. Um, another question that we got from um, Flor says, do we have to be employed to qualify? No, definitely not. Uh, school is the focus here. And uh, if you have it, no, it's not a uh, part of the equation. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, and we have the last question on the chat, probably not the last question from our scholars and we'll continue to take questions as they come. Um, but George asked, how will the amount that covers housing work? Since the disbursements are processed through the school, will we receive the amount in time before the school year begins? So this is going to depend a little bit on the on the school uh, and, and the timing, but the way that it works is just like, you know, we give the school the, the total amount and then they take, um, you know, the, the tuition and if, if you're living off campus or if some part of that is due to be refunded to, directly to you, then the school would process that. Um, it, it's kind of school dependent in that regard. And I know uh, you know, if there are issues there, uh, we're certainly happy to follow up with the school and, and, you know, try to understand specific situations. Uh, but that's, some of that is kind of relying on the, on the school's processes and timing. I don't know, Gabby, if you have anything more to add there, I know that's something that you've been, uh, interested in. Yeah, this is where it's going to be important for you to be your own advocate and have um, a good relationship with the folks at that financial aid office to understand how the processes are going to be done. Um, so this is where it's going to be important uh, to start finding out now um, from your financial aid office, if you were to get a loan, how fast will they be able to disperse those funds to you? And for, um, we have another question for income. Do you put the income reported on your 2020 taxes or the current income? Uh, I'll answer this in, by kind of explaining this, the spirit of why we're asking this is, is really if you have a full-time job, if there was a gap between your undergraduate education and your graduate education, um, you know, we're interested, in, obviously you're going to school to put yourself in a better position to you know, get a better job, make more income. And we wanna make sure that, uh, you know, that we're helping to provide that. So if you had an actual you know, job with a, with a salary, uh, it's really your salary. And, and Gabby, I'll, I'll let you win here too, because I know this is something you're interested in, but. I would say it's really just the salary that you had at the job before that that you left potentially left uh, in order to go to school. Uh, if it was just you were an undergrad and you were you know working part time to help get yourself through school, 
you know, that's more, um, you don't have to go and figure, figure out, oh, what exactly did I make? It's, it's more about if you had a salaried job in between undergrad and graduate school, but I don't know if anyone else has any more to add on that. I think that's right, Brandon. Um, this part of the question is we want to be able to um, later go to not just uh, people who have been um, participating and funding the loan program, but also others to show them that higher education, especially specifically graduate school, is important and being able to help you all with these loans, um, be able to get better pays and better income is actually good for everyone. So um, that's kind of the reason for the question. And we have another question around um, what does the academic year entail? And it says, will we include summer 2022 tuition in this year or is it for next year? Uh, that's going to depend sometimes on your school. I would say the default answer I would give there is it would not, you would not be including summer 2022. Um, the school typically will not certify that amount. You know, they, we have to make, send whatever you're requesting to them, make sure that that's, you know, your need. They likely would not be including summer 2022 in that amount. I don't know, Ryan or Robo, if you have anything to add there, because I know it can get a little tricky at the school level. Yeah, and, and that, so that that is will be something that is uh, school dependent. Um, uh, what does the school define as their school year? Um, most schools are cutting off uh, this current school year, you know, in May, June-ish, around that time. Um, uh, some will extend to, to next summer. Um, so that is uh, something that you will probably want to contact your school to ask them, what, what do you consider uh, to be the school year? And uh, please, if, if they do say we do include the next summer, uh, when you're filling out uh, uh, the form uh, where we put in the school year end date, uh, so that's where you're putting in, you know, what, what is the period of, of this loan? You know, is it um, uh, September through August or is it uh, September through May? Uh, but the majority of the schools that we deal with um, are not including uh, summer of uh, 2022, uh, in which case uh, uh, we would uh, do, do that as part of uh, next year's application. Great. And I'm going to ask Danielle to help me answer this question um, around the university. So if somebody wants to know where do I find the list of universities, and it's not so much that there's a list of universities, but all of you, um, as you remembered, filled out a pre-application survey and you told us already the universities that you um, were accepted to and we're gonna go to. So that got pre-populated into our form and this is where we're getting the list. However, um, as Ryan was showing you during the application, if there's a change in the institution where now you have been accepted to another institution and you get a better rate and you're getting more scholarship and that's a better institution for you to go to and attend, then you can clear that filter and you can put in that um, information or contact Raul, um, that information of Raul's contact information and email is in the bottom of each one of these pages and you can contact him and let him know so that there can be a calculation and made sure that the university that you're choosing, this new university, um, meets the criteria that we have. And Danielle, I don't know if you want to add something to that. Um, sure. So I think the main thing to keep in mind is the reason why we are looking at institution eligibility is to make sure that uh, the program will set you up for success once you graduate. So there are a few key dimensions and Gabby actually has an email listing all of it out. So I will spare you the need to remember this. Um, but if you're curious, uh, you can definitely reach out to Gabby for more information on that. Um, but basically, once again, it's just to make sure that the institution is setting you up uh, for success in your career once you graduate. Thank you. So um, we got a question from Ingrid. And Ingrid, I don't know if you want to get yourself off mute and ask the question, if you're in a place that you can do that.
Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so I just basically want to know how it would work if we don't use the full loan amount at the end of the year. Like, will we still be uh, required to pay that full amount or just use that full amount? Or, yeah, just want more information on that. Yeah, um, this is where I think if you have money left over, and that would be probably because your living expenses or sort of the you know amount that you borrowed above and beyond the tuition that went to your school, if you have money left over at the end of the year, you will have that in your pocket. You know, it, it's not like the school is giving it to you every month. Like they're going to give it to you typically. Uh, at the beginning of the semester, you will spend what you need to spend. And then if you have money left over, um, you know, I think if you're in a position to do so, then you would just kind of use that amount to pay down the loan. Or potentially towards the amount that you may need to borrow for next year. Is that another option, Brandon? Like lowering the amount that you would need to request for next year if you have leftover funds? Yeah, that, that's a, you know, your personal decision. If, if you want to just keep it and borrow less next year, the net effect will roughly be the same that when you look at how much you borrowed in total to go to graduate school, uh, you know, that will be the same impact, you know, either paying it down, paying the first year loan down, first year amount down, or as Hannah said, just keeping that, knowing that you have that, it's kind of like we talked about having savings in the beginning. Um, so you just keep that and borrow less in the second year. But I'm sorry to jump in here, but it's important to keep in mind that you start accruing interest, i.e. You're, the minute you're, the loan is dispersed. So if the loan is dispersed um, either to the school um, and then to the school will disperse it to you, you will start accruing interest um, on the amount dispersed. So that's something for you to keep in mind. So I guess here is, you know, you have to be strategic and when you're thinking of how much money you're going to borrow and try not to over borrow because you're going to be paying interest on that money. So that's one key thing to think about. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Danielle, um, who has some important information to share with all of you. Great. Thank you, Gabby. Uh, so we wanted to take a few minutes uh, to just provide an update on the timeline for when we expect the application to go live. Uh, but before doing that, did want to touch on data collection from the loan program for complete transparency and also just to make sure you are all aware and informed. Uh, so we will be collecting certain data from you all just to understand the outcomes from the loans. So for example, we will collect uh, income and employment information uh, post-graduation whether you received in-state tuition and other similar data. And we wanna stress that we will in no way be sharing individual data or any personal identifiable information, but that we will be sharing aggregated data uh, across all students so that we can kind of boast about all of your successes and demonstrate your high repayment rates to funders and investors. So doing this, we'll just make sure we can continue to, you know, access the lowest cost financing possible and benefit future dreamers and their graduate school um, aspirations. So again, just to reiterate, we will only be sharing the aggregated data. We will not be sharing individual data and want to make sure that you're all aware of this uh, going into the application. So I will pause for a minute just to see if you have any questions on the data collection piece. Great. Well, if you do have any questions, uh, definitely feel free to uh, just come off mute and let us know or put in the chat. And finally, uh, as for when we expect the application to go live, again, still a little bit of a moving target, but we are working as quickly as possible to make sure everything is in order on the back end so that we can launch uh, ideally by the end of next week. Uh, so this, again, is our best estimate at this point. Uh, but for complete transparency, this may shift uh, ever so slightly. So please be sure to just regularly check your emails uh, so that you know exactly when the application goes live. Uh, and again, truly appreciate your continued patience and flexibility here uh, as we get this application live for you all. 
And so I do know that some of your programs have already started or are starting shortly. So again, we do encourage you to just complete the application as soon as you're able to, uh, but I will defer to Brandon, Raul, and Ryan on providing an update on estimated timing from when the application is complete to when the first loan disbursement happens. So Brandon, Ryan, Raul, anything you want to chime in? Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, to some degree that is dependent on, on the school and when they want the money, you know, we, you do what, what you need to do in the application. We will get, you know, your documents, we will get the, the loan processed and, and like we talked about, we send the information to the school. The school says, yes, they're going here. Yes. They, they need this amount of money to go here. And we say, great. Um, and then they essentially tell us, you know, when they would be ready for, for the, for the disbursement. And that can vary depending on when your semester is starting and at the school level. But, uh, this is really Ryan's wheelhouse. So I don't know, Ryan, if you, uh, have anything to add to that. Yeah. Once, once the school has come back to us, uh, to say, yes, uh, the, the, the student, we do certify, they attend the school and they're in the program and, and they do have this loan need. Uh, uh, some schools wait till after drop ad is over before they uh, actually request the money. So it may, the date, the initial disbursement date that you get uh, may seem a little shocking, uh, but please do know that uh, the school has been, you know, has, has that information uh, and is aware that uh, they are expecting um, that money. Um, so uh, there's no need to panic, uh, you know, oh, oh no, they, they don't want the money until October, uh, which some schools do, uh, but typically uh, for the uh, um, upcoming fall semester, uh, schools are um, expecting the money around mid-August, that, that's the typical uh, date range. Um, and if uh, and if your semester is already in progress, uh, schools will uh, request the money uh, uh, much sooner. So it, it's really kind of dependent on on the school's timeline and and when when they want that money to hit their account. I hope I wasn't on mute. Was I on mute? That was nope. unfortunate. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. And we have uh, one more question that just came in. Just to clarify, when we request a loan, we are calculating fall and spring, or are we just borrowing every semester? So you are calculating for the fall, fall and spring, so your academic year. And are there any other questions that you might want to get yourself on, off mute and asked before we say our goodbyes? Uh, yeah, I do. Actually, it's not a question. It's just I didn't quite hear uh, Danielle. She said by when we should be expecting the application to go live. Um, you said by the end of next week. Ideally, yes. Though it's still a little bit uh, in shift, so. Okay. So you should just right. check your emails, but that's that's the target. Yeah, but this is the last, like I guess, um, meeting for information, right? After this is just the application. Correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, well, I want to say thank you so much again to the Funding You team and Social Finance for everything you have done to get us to this almost finish line. We're almost there. And um, we're really excited that we are going to be able to help you um, pay forward your uh, graduate degree programs. We wish this would be in the form of, of a scholarship. But unfortunately, there's not enough funds to go around for that. So alone um, is the best that we can do. And um, the best that we can do is all for you all, because we really believe in you. Um, you are part of our family, the dream that you as family, and we want to see you succeed. So we're really excited to see everything you all are going to accomplish. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. We are going to be here for you um, to answer any questions you may have. So thank you all. Have a good evening.